welcome to Garden Hands. It is mid-February and we are gonna be starting ranunculus today, or at least the first planting of ranunculus. My plan this year is to get it out probably by the end of March or early April, which is a little bit different than I did last year. So I'm gonna walk through my plan for this year, why you should grow ranunculus, and I've got a little bit of a helper right now. And then because we're gonna be starting corms as well, I'll have a different helper hopefully help me in three hours time. So ranunculus, these are absolutely amazing flowers. They are beautiful. Do you know what they are? Yeah, I helped plant them last year. You remember them from last year? Do you remember cutting them? Yeah. Do you remember, what do they look like? They're like poofy, like kind of like, um, like they're spiky. Spiky? Poofy, but like that. Poofy, like they have a lot of petals on them? Yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of look like a rose or almost a, do you know yeah. what a peony is? Yeah. 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 They I got a lot of yeah, petals. That's a rose. Like. A rose? Oh, the spiky of a rose, maybe? Is yeah. that what you were <laughs> kind of going for? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, ranunculus are absolutely beautiful. They are a cooler season flower. They have good height for cutting, putting in bouquets or arrangements. <laughs> that was our dog discovering the door stopper. <laughs> that is... Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He just... <laughs> Freaked Hello. himself out. <laughs> um, they, they come in a ton of different colors. Dark pink, light pink, white, yellow, purple, peach, uh, green, almost a brownish purple color. So they go with any kind of arrangement. They are a cooler season flower, so they're gonna be blooming earlier in the season than a lot of other things. They have an amazing, amazing, amazing vase life, um, maybe a couple weeks, which is so nice in the early spring when not a whole lot else is blooming and you can put it in your vase in the kitchen and it's gonna last for a couple weeks. So that's really great. And then another really nice thing is that some varieties, you can dig up the corms, hold on, if you live in a zone where you need to dig up the corms, you can dig them up and they sometimes will multiply. So your stock of ranunculus can continue growing. That being said, there are some varieties or some producers of ranunculus that prefer or maybe even have a patent on their ranunculus and you're not supposed to dig them up and replant them. So maybe do your research, figure out which variety you have and if that's allowed or not. So what I, my plan for ranunculus this year, I have corms that I would like to be starting, so I'll walk through how we're gonna do that. And then last year I had purchased seeds of ranunculus and I'm gonna be using up hopefully the last of the seeds just to make sure that they're still viable, that we get them out of the seed stock or my seed storage and hopefully they grow well this year. So I filled a 72 count plug tray with, this is seed starting mix. It's slightly damp. Emma's gonna help me plant Bloomingdale Blue by color and Mache Pastel Mix. I don't know how many we have left, but we'll fill up the tray. If we need another tray, we can do that. Maybe plant two seeds per cell. Yeah. And just put them on top and then we'll go through and push them down just a little bit when you're all done. Yep. Okay, so do you wanna pick which one you wanna do first and put the marker in closest to you? I'll do the blue one. The blue. blue by color. Bloomingdale Blue. I will say this was not my favorite color last year, but actually, can you grab a scissors too? This one's tape shut. I think the seeds might be loose in here. Okay. It's surprising because your favorite color is blue. My favorite color is blue, but oh, oh we got a lot. Okay, oh try two seeds per cell and see how far it takes you. Okay, grandpa. <laughs> Just like your grandpa. Emma's gonna put the seeds in the cells. I will cover them with vermiculite when they go downstairs, put them under a humidity dome, and once they've germinated and I start to see some green growth, I'll take the humidity dome off and just put them under lights. But what that does mean is that once they start growing and once it warms up in about a month, if we can get the ground and future plans for a little hoop tunnel, I don't know, caterpillar tunnel, we might be able to start planting these in the ground in a month, which is 
That's super soon. Yeah, very soon. There's still two feet of snow out there, so that's pretty exciting. We'll see if that actually works. That's the plan for this year, but we'll see. We can talk about that in an upcoming video. And then once they get a little bit bigger, I will probably pop them up into a bigger container because there are two per cell in here. Uh, they grow... Two or three. Two or three. Or four. <laughs> That's fine. That doesn't matter. All right, put your tag in and you can start on the next ones. When you plant the corms, they grow super fast. And I had really good luck... These are in a little pack. I had really good luck with this planting the seeds last year. Most of them germinated and they grew and bloomed. So I was really excited with the seeds. I would like a, to find a better variety of colors. Again, the blue wasn't my favorite, but that's all right. Pastel mix was really great. And the other color I had last year might have been yellow. I like the pink and red ones the best. The pink and red? Yep, we had They're corns. They're very vibrant. Yeah, they were very, very vibrant. And I don't like those. <laughs> You don't like red flowers. That's true, that's true. So that's what we're gonna do with these. Then I also have um, corms that I had saved from last year as well as I purchased some corms this year. And we're gonna start the first round of those today. Those take a little bit longer. It's not a hard process, but it is something you have to kind of plan for. It's already four o'clock here, so we're hitting late enough in the day that it's gonna be dark when we try to film the last part of this. But basically what I wanna do is fill up some containers with water. The ranunculus that I have in here are loose. Sometimes they come in mesh bags, in which case you can just keep them in their mesh bag, probably label them so you know what variety it is, okay. and then put all of the mesh bags into one large container. That's it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, well that's a bummer. I should have done little six pack trays. Okay, that's So good. they only filled about a little more than halfway, so. But each of them have two or three in it, yep. so it would okay. fill two full trays when I get to bump them up and make them in yep. each have their own cell. But okay, that's perfect, thank you. So what I will do with these because they are just loose in here is I have five containers that I'm going to fill with water. I will label each of the containers so I don't forget which one is which, and then just dump the corms right in there. They are very dried out right now, but once they are able to soak in water for a while, they're going to rehydrate and all the nutrients they need to start growing are right within the corms. Online, you'll find a range of how long to soak your corms, anywhere from two hours to 24 hours. Um, I would suggest find something that works for you. I've done three hours for the past three years and that works great for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. I'm, perhaps six hours or eight hours would work just as well, but. I'm gonna stick with three because it works for me. Also, some people will put fish tank aerators or other way, means of aerating their water into these containers. And if you have that ability, go for it. Some people might leave a water source dripping so that it adds oxygen into the water. That's great. My plan is to just, I have to make some dinner tonight, so I'll already be in here, but I'm going to just change the water out. I'll just add a little bit more water every half hour, 45 minutes or so for three hours. In addition to the seeds that Emma started for us, I purchased several new varieties of ranunculus corms this year. They are Amandine Chamallow, Amandine White, Labelle Champagne, and a pastel mix. And then I also have a bag of corms that I've saved over the past couple of years and I just stored it upstairs in our room that's pretty cold and dry. I will be starting those maybe in two or three weeks. So it's possible I'll have a succession of ranunculus. So as I mentioned, these ranunculus are pretty dry. They're very twig-like. Um, they kind of look like a little octopus or some kind of a sea creature, but they're very dry, pretty brittle when they have been stored. After they've soaked for three hours or whatever length of time that you soak them for, you can see that they look hydrated. The tuber part of them is plumped up. It's not squishy, it's still hard, but it's definitely a lot bigger than it was when before they went in the water. To pre-sprout ranunculus, it's pretty easy. All I'm gonna do is fill up a tray with potting soil. There are not holes in the bottom of this tray. If you have a tray that has holes in the bottom, that's great. 
I am just going to be really careful, I think, with the watering of this so that they're never sitting in water. They don't like to be overwatered. But my plan is that they're only going to be in this tray for a couple weeks before I pot them up. Basically what I'm doing is filling this tray about three-fourths of the way full. It only has an inch or two of soil. And then I'm going to start putting the corms into the soil with the little tentacles facing down. Think of them like the roots. They're going to go down. On the top of the corm, there's a little bit of a flat spot. You can sometimes see where the stem was last year. And that helps you figure out which way is up and which way is down. It's pretty easy with ranunculus. You just want the little pokey ends going down into the soil. I'm going to try to do a good job this year of keeping track of which variety is which. Last year I had a little bit of an issue with that, but this year I'm separating them. I'm just using some tin foil to put a divider in between the different varieties, and that's about it. And then once you have all of your ranunculus put into soil, I'm just topping it off with a little bit more soil. You don't have to cover them very much. In fact, a lot of people that I've been watching on YouTube, they don't put any soil over the top at all. So really what you're doing is getting contact with the soil. This is going to allow the roots to start forming fairly quickly. And then you can move them outside if you're in a zone that you're able to do that. Or you can pot them up into a bigger container so they have a little bit more room to spread out. But that's about it. I'm going to put these in a cool, dark place. For a couple weeks i'll check on them every couple days just to make sure that they do have a little bit of moisture in the soil again you don't want them to be overly saturated but once you start to see a little bit of growth then you're going to move them under the lights that growth can come in one of two forms either you're going to see the green shoots start coming up or you're going to notice that they start sending out these really bright white roots and from my experience, they are pretty vigorous. I mean, you can tell right away once they have started growing and just put them under the lights and within a couple days, you're gonna start seeing green all over your tray. So that's it for ranunculus. I will probably do a grow room tour or an update on these in a few weeks, show you how they're doing and hopefully, my fingers are crossed, we will be planting these out within about a month, which is absolutely crazy. I have not planted anything out in my garden before you know, early May before, this is going to be really exciting. So I'm hoping those plans come together and we'll take you along as we get that done. Please subscribe to our channel. It really means a lot to us. Uh, we're trying to put out some more videos this year, be a little bit more consistent and see how much our channel can grow. So we really appreciate you guys watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.